Hi everybody, it's John here, and welcome to another video. I know it's been a, a bit of a long time between this one and the last one, but um, that's just life, isn't it? So as the title of the video says, I've now been through about, just over in fact, 3,000 shots with this new Nikon Z7 II. So I thought I'd just give a few uh, of my impressions with it, although it's not going to be a gear review video, um, and then I'll get on to some of the photographs I've been taking recently. I got the camera in December 2020, making the move from a D750-D810 combo. I made the move to the Z system because I felt that the technology for mirrorless has now come along somewhat since the first generation, uh, and I'd like to do a bit more video. There's plenty of buttons on the camera now, there's dual processors for decent autofocus, that's a hot potato that we'll come on to later, and for the Paranoid there's now two card slots in this, in this thing. These Z lenses are sharp as hell, um, good for autofocus on, on video and stills, but there's plenty of other reviews online, so go and check those out. This is not what this is going to be. We've also got a nice boost to megapixelage, up to 45 megapixels with this uh, this camera, which gives me a bit more croppability, especially since um, you know affording a mega telephoto isn't really an option right now. So I've been using the Z 24mm 1.8 Prime, a 105 micro with the F to Z adapter, also using the F to Z on my 70-200 f2.8 and I recently acquired the Z 24-70 f2.8. I've had great results with all of these lenses, there's a lot of scaremongering online and there's absolutely no problem for 95% of use cases. Obviously the native lenses are better for video work, but if you're just going to be taking stills then the F to Z adapter works absolutely fine, including with autofocus in my opinion. The hot potato for the camera does seem to be the autofocus, which is better now since we've got dual processors in this Mark II version. I've not had access to things like face detect and eye detect before, uh, so it's a bit of a change to the way I used to shoot with DSLRs. I've not been photographing birds in flight or, or moving cars or anything like that, but I have had people walking towards the camera fairly briskly and I've had absolutely zero problems with it. Sometimes I think people get stuck in a YouTube echo chamber. The autofocus is great, Nikon isn't dying. So now onto the photographs. So with a new camera body I'd usually like to take a trip or two away um, to really test it out but uh, the last three or four months we've not been able to do that so um, I've done my best locally. I'm not going to show a load of photographs from the 3000 I've taken but you can check out a load on the portfolio I've got on Adobe Portfolios and there's another couple of videos that you can go and see of the, the, the previous trips I've taken. So one of the first things I did back in February was to take some pictures of some roses um, that were on the kitchen table because it was bad weather and uh, I didn't want to go outside. So I got my old black shirt um, and put up this rose in a little clamp and did some photo stacking, uh, which turned out okay. Um, cheated a bit with the water spray. Yeah, not bad, not bad. The rose in the, in the vase looks the best, I think. Hello, hello. What's that eye spot on the flower bed? So here we have Fergus the frog, uh, found on the garden wall. Did a few close-up shots of him and he stayed quite still, so that was quite good. Next we went out for a bit of an evening drive to enjoy the sunset. I was talking to a friend of mine today about how you get to a certain point in life where you've got to live to be happy. And that's how I feel right now, I'm living to be happy. Stood in the middle of nowhere, watching the sunset with someone I love. Soppy git. Yeah! <laughs> Great. Yeah, life's what you make it. Peaceful. Yeah. Soppy git. Yeah. I see a camera. It's still unnatural to talk to it though, strangely enough. So this is St. James and St. Paul's Church in Martin. I've been here before, but this evening it looked great with the sunset. Look at this. Isn't this ridiculous? Mustache. Great big bushy beard. <laughs> What's that from? It's hot fuzz, isn't it? A great big bushy beard. No luck catching them swans then. I should really not try and do accents ever. Look where we are. Look at that sunset. Look at it. Look at the moon. Look at the moon. Look at it. 
It's massive. I love evenings like this. It's cool, crisp, and dry. I think we've exhausted this conversation we can have in a car park and there's something coming past, so I'm gonna say bye. Late Feb now, we took a little trip out to Asbury down to the canal. Uh, not much out there, but these geese, uh, and one particular one with an attitude problem here. Then I had a new toy arrive, which was the uh, Nikon 24-70 f2.8, and this is a fantastic lens. It's a little bit heavier than the f4 version, but the extra stop of light is worth it for me. You actually filmed that? Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> I'm a children's worker. Does that explain it? It's World Book Day on the 4th of March, so I am. Uh, wait for it. Where is it? <laughs> room on the broom. I'm the witch. This was quite cool to do some outdoor shots of uh, Jess in her little costume for World Book Day. Got the remote flash out and tried, tried a few. Never done that before. Turned out alright. You take your foot out and shot. Thank you. Early March now and took a trip out to Congleton Park and saw the Havana Weir. There are various little shots of flowers here. Spring has sprung uh, and uh, you know it was great to have a little walk around. Same day and took a trip over to Gorsworth to see the ducks. Uh, too many duck shots now, I'll try and not include many more of these. Really interesting overflow pipe here. Um, yeah. A few more ducks, because why not? And then we had a lovely sunset afterwards, with the light playing really nicely over St James Church here. So back in November 2020, I tried to take a trip out to Mocop Castle where you can supposedly see all of Cheshire and Staffordshire from the, from the peak. But that was a failure, steamed up lens. So I decided to come back in March this year and took a few photos of the, the runes. Very pretty, I think. Please don't leave beer bottles in National Trust sites. Nice little portcullis as well. I think that's what it's called. Skipping ahead to mid-March now, had a Friday morning off, so I had a, a 10, 11 kilometre walk with Jane, setting out from Holmes Chapel, and crossing the River Dane and over to the Hermitage. After a little while, we ended up walking through a field somewhere in Goostery, where I met this lovely fella. He, no hesitation, he trotted right up to say hello. He kept showing me his best side, so who am I to photograph him any other way? Is it a he? Might be a she. So then we walked back to Holmes Chapel, to the legendary Mandeville's Cake Shop, to have a pasty and a Sally Lund bun. Next day we headed to another National Trust site, Hare Hill, which is a tranquil wooded garden surrounded by historic parkland with a delightful walled garden at its heart. The gardens weren't quite at their best just then, but a lovely place to visit nonetheless and walk around for an hour or so. I actually posted one of the pictures from this set on Reddit and I was surprised to see it actually did quite well, reaching the front page. Worthless internet points, but still, it's nice. Skipping ahead a bit now to Good Friday and what better way to ensure that the gluttonous evening meal is offset by having a good walk. My mate Jim and I went up to Three Shires Head, which is the point on Axe Edge Moor where Cheshire, Derbyshire and Staffordshire meet. There's a small little pack horse grade two listed bridge there, uh, which was probably constructed in the 18th century, which I don't actually have a photograph of because there were so many people there. Mistake on our part really set off too late in the day. Did get this little bridge that was just off to the side though when no one was walking past. There's a few little waterfalls there, so took this high speed picture of the water. I'm starting to learn about 2,500th to a 4,000th of a second is probably the best for water, otherwise you get a bit of blur. So we made our way back to Gradbatch at that point and uh, I had a fight with a gate and uh, bashed my knee in. So if you're walking past that gate, just be aware that the hinge is broken and you'll probably almost kill yourself like I did. Had the camera in my hand, but it, it escaped unscathed. So yes. we're early April now, 
taking a trip out to Biddulph Grange uh, Country Park. Uh, saw a few birds there and took a trip up to the little cave which is at the top of the uh, top of the hill. Again, why do people leave litter? Just stop it, seriously. Had to get quite close to this Canada goose to get the shot and he started to hiss just as I took the photo, so narrow escape. I don't trust him. Also got the chance to get some strawberries in, in early April. Hopefully we'll get um, some fruit this year. It is April, stop snowing on my strawberries. Also went out to Nipersley, Nippersley Reservoir. Uh, saw this little cormorant, which was uh, on a buoy in the middle of the reservoir. Also a nice little picture of a robin who came dead close. Another National Trust site to finish off in Lime Park, where I took a few more photographs. Not a lot open, but got some okay ones of the exterior. Had a nice walk around the Spring Garden and, uh, and the Italian Garden as well. Also saw a few of these geese, which I'd never seen before, and apparently it's called a grey lag goose. So there we go, today I learned. So this is one of the most obvious structures in the park, and it's called the Cage, which uh, stands on a hill to the east of the approach road to the house. It was originally a hunting lodge, and was later used as a park keeper's cottage and as a lockup for prisoners. Okay, so that's everything I have this time. Hopefully I'll be able to get something out a bit quicker next time, but no promises. I do this for fun, and as soon as it becomes not fun, I won't do it. I'd love to hear your comments, so please leave them below. Um, photo critique, but please be nice, and please leave me any requests for stuff you'd like to see in the future. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Recording voiceovers is more difficult than it looks. I've got dry throat. <clears throat>